Hi, I'm Doug for Run Home DIY, and in this video, I'll continue work on our Rubo inspired workbench by adding a leg vise. If you're not familiar with leg vices, they usually consist of a long wooden chop or jaw, a wooden or metal screw, and some type of guide that prevents the chop from rotating and racking when in use. Since this bench was a bit of an experiment, I decided to try using a linear bearing and shaft for the guide, similar to a few designs I'd seen mentioned online. To make installing the bearing a little easier, I went ahead and drilled holes for it and the screw at the drill press before mounting the leg to the bench top. To do this, I used a few Forstner bits to start with and then finish up the holes using a spade bit and backer board to prevent tear out. Next, I double checked that the linear bearing was perpendicular to the front face of the leg and made a few slight adjustments with the Forstner bit and my cordless drill before pre-drilling and screwing it to the leg. Then I mounted the vice screws collar to the rear of the leg using four 3 inch number 14 screws to center the collar opening with the hole in the leg and mostly just eyeballed it from above while making a few marks at the extents. And after marking the hole locations, I then pre drilled and screwed it in place. After a quick test, I decided the hardware definitely needed a new paint job, so I masked off the screw with a bit of string and a piece of dowel for the collar and spray painted it a flat black. Next, it was time to work on the chop. I started by rough cutting a 2x8 into two pieces at the miter saw. I then ran one face from each piece through the joiner and then glued the two pieces together to form one thick piece. Once the glue dried, I took it back over to the joiner to flatten one face and one edge before surfacing the other face at the planer. I then took it back over to the miter saw to cut it to final length before ripping it to final width at the table saw. To make it easier to cut pieces held in the vise, I went ahead and cut a bevel across the top of the chop before heading over to the drill press and bandsaw to make it look a bit fancier and to lighten it a little. To do that, I used a large Forstner bit to cut out a curve about a foot from the top on each side. I then scrapped a line along the edge starting at the inside of the curve and cut the pieces off at my bandsaw. After a little sanding to clean up the bandsaw marks, I added a quarter inch chamfer to the front edge of the chop using my router before drilling out the hole for the vise screw at the drill press and wiping on a little boil linseed oil. Then it was time to attach the vise to the bench. I started by reattaching the screw collar after painting it to the back of the leg. I then inserted the vise screw through the chop and threaded it onto the collar. To ensure that the screw was centered in the hole in the chop, I shimmed it along the floor and then pre-drilled and attached a screw to the chop with a pair of 2 inch number 14 screws. Next, with the chop tightened against the bench leg and centered along the bottom, I inserted the Forstner bit that matched the bearing and shaft size and marked on the back of the chop the location for the shaft, and then drilled a 2 inch hole over at the drill press. Then I decided to go ahead and attach a 1 inch oak dowel to use as a handle. I did test the sliding handle, but it seemed a bit annoying to use, so for now I just kept things simple and fixed the handle in place with a screw. After temporarily installing the shaft, it was time for some test. Unfortunately, the weight of the chop combined with the slight play in the vise screw caused the shaft to sometimes bind in the bearing. Luckily, the solution was to simply use a piece of wood as a guide. To do this, I removed the shelf, and since I'd already glued the inner stretcher in place, I drilled a couple of holes through it and then attached the guide with screws to the outer stretcher. This worked really well and helped keep the shaft parallel to the screw and both of them perpendicular to the leg, which resulted in very smooth movement when opening and closing the vise. Sadly, there was still a little racking when clamping workpieces down hard in the vise. A 30mm bearing and shaft probably would have eliminated most of it, but with the 20mm ones I'd used, I decided to try a J-Bait solution, which was to use a wedge along the bottom of the chop. To make the wedge, I found another piece of scrap wood and cut it to 16 inches long by 6 inches wide. I then used some double-sided tape to secure it to a piece of MDF at the right angle to act as a tapering jig at the table saw. After ripping it into two pieces, I cut one half down to make it a smaller 12-inch wedge for work pieces up to 3-inch wide. I then used the wedge to mark off the corresponding piece that I needed to remove on the chop and cut it out using a handsaw. To finish up the chop, I added a little wood glue to the hole for the shaft mostly just to harden the wood around it as the fit was already tight enough to hold it in place. Also cut a piece of thick drawer liner to add even more grip to the top of the chop and use some double sided tape again to secure it in place. With these changes, it's now possible to apply a tremendous amount of clamping pressure to a workpiece. So thanks again to Jay for mentioning the wedge idea in his workbench videos. Well, that'll wrap up this leg vise build. I'll have links below to all the parts that I used if you're interested in making one yourself. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to see our next videos on building a sliding dead man and installing an end vise.